Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to some of the third channel videos. Still wanted to give you a brief overview and review of my new Go Cycle G4i. I purchased it in just the last few days, and I've ridden it about 50 miles now. So I wanted to give you my uh, you know, thoughts, my opinions, and everything else so far about how it works, why it works, because there's so many cool features. But before we can talk about any cool features, I think with a product like this, you have to start with the price. When it comes to electric bikes, this is very close towards the top end of the market. And so when it has a price tag of 3900 and 99 pounds you know it's almost uh, it would have been more polite almost to go for 4,000. Uh, it, it does have to be said that this is an expensive bike. The lowest end model, the G4, comes in at 3399, and the highest end model, the G4i Plus, comes in at 4999. So you're spending a small car payment on something that you can lift a lot easier than a car, but admittedly goes a lot less fast than a car. Did you know cars can go at like 100 miles per hour? But this thing is capped to just 20 or 15.5 if you live in Europe and uh, let the device know that you live in Europe, as you definitely should do, and follow your local legal regulations. And so, uh, allow me to give you a little bit of a guide around this bike, because I think the first thing when you look at this is just there's a lot of confusion about how it all works. In fact, I, I, most people I've seen, I, 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 I had this initial impression, but so many people I've passed have been like, yeah, that's like a rental bike, because when you look at this thing from the side, it has everything in common with a Boris bike, with a, uh, you know, like a city bike scheme from Paris or Amsterdam. It, it looks like a bike you'd rent in a dock and that you'd take it right back. It looks a lot like a um, city bike actually from New York is what it reminds me of most. However, unlike all of those schemes, you actually get to own this device. I mean, if you pay all of that money, it might be cheaper to, to rent one for literally uh, a few years uh, as opposed to buying this. However, unlike buying those, you can take this in your house. And the biggest thing about this, in fact, the biggest reason it's got such a high price tag is because it's not just an e-bike, it is a folding e-bike. That's right, if you wanted to take this in your house, it would be easier than most bikes, because let's say you live in a city, maybe London, let's give an example where square footage or square meterage is very hard to come by, and let's say you don't have much space in your house, or you're flat even, and you want to carry something upstairs that's going to be a whole nightmare, then maybe you prefer having a bike that with just one latch can fold right in half. And there you go, that is a bike that is half as big by itself, this is actually already a pretty cool thing. You can leave the bike on while you do this, which I, I didn't know until just now. Maybe you're not meant to, but <laughs> we'll come into that later. And then even better, there is a second latch that comes off right here. And if you take this off, it's a little bit stronger. You can fold the handlebars in towards the stem like that. And if you want to go one step further, you never do want to in my experience, but just in case you're like going on a train where there's dimensions they measure, then you can go even smaller. You can take a little yellow thing off here. There's a safety clip on at all times. Then you can push this in a little bit further, and then this pedal comes out as well. Where you put this pedal is, there's actually a spot for it right over here, but you know, I, I'd, I'd recommend not putting it in there. It fell out the first time I put it in. So this is a unnecessary step, as is, just in case you really want to. You can also take out the handlebar stem, and you can get even smaller for when, you, again, you're putting it in luggage or something where you really have to minimize the space. In reality, I think most people say that even though this is cool, you don't need the pedal out. In reality, having the folding stem down is even for some people maybe a step too far. But I think for most people, being able to fold a bike in half immediately uh, allows you to store it in much better places. This now fits in a corner as opposed to taking up most of the wall. This now fits in a cupboard as opposed to having to be left outside where you know it might be stolen uh, or something like that. The foldability of this bike is one of the really cool benefits. And I was so worried, in fact, I've, I've ridden a lot of foldable bikes that just don't feel good. You're always worried that like, how is the folding mechanism really gonna stay in touch? In fact, on every single e-scooter I've owned, that exact same concern has been right there. But this bike has a very strong focus on the fact that it was designed by a former F1 engineer. He worked at McLaren, by the way, so, I mean, last few years in F1 means that maybe, maybe you'd prefer a bike built by Mercedes. Actually, they do make electric scooters, so uh, F1 talk aside. Uh, this is a bike that you feel very secure is not gonna come under. Actually, <laughs> that is surprisingly, actually, there we go. Look at that, unless you press the latch, you can push this all the way, nothing's gonna happen. This pedal, nothing, nothing's happening to this pedal. There is a safety thing, then also there's this. It just doesn't work. Um, the, the stem, this would be the most terrifying thing to fall out at any given point in time. This stem is so hard to take off that you know it's not gonna be uh, activated by some random forces. And indeed, uh, everything about the bike manages to be sleek and lightweight, but also feel like it's sturdily enough designed. And that's where, uh, you know, things like the front fork come in so interesting to me. That is where, you know, this manages to stay afloat despite being only attached on one side and also having the motor and all of its cables going through there. If you look at the back, it's the exact same deal. All of the gearing system, which is automatic by the way, is done all back here. 
And it's uh, and by the way, if you buy um, if you buy the G4i or the G4i Plus, there is not a single exposed cable. Every every e-bike and even regular bikes, there's there's some brake cables or there's some wiring cables or there's something like that. In this bike's case, no, none of that. You will not find a single exposed cable, and it's got a very sleek look as a result of that. I I do have to say. Uh, you know, this is not the cup video of the third channel. Who, who cares about pulling uh, formation orders and stuff? Uh, it is one of the very few bikes uh, that I've ridden where people... Uh, I Just today, I heard free comments being like, yeah, that's a cool bike. And uh, that's the sort of thing that, you know, like everyone dreams off with their dumb, expensive cars and that you actually don't actually get. But in maybe when you're riding a bike, you actually get it. So just in case vanity is a motivating factor for you, and we all like to pretend it's not, but it is always to some extent, then this is a pretty cool bike for that reason, at least in cities. You know what? Something that happened after I recorded this review was uh, I was on a train and my bike was blocking the aisle the tiniest bit, and a woman walked past and got caught in it a little bit, and I, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And she's like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. Cool bike, by the way. And like, even when someone's like caught up and like in that uh, embarrassing situation where they're so focused on themselves that they said something like that, I don't know. It was like a feel good feeling that I didn't realize I wanted and I didn't even expect before purchasing it. But yeah, it's, it's a cool bike. But like I was saying before, um, it's the sort of bike that does require lots of add-ons because they wanted to get to the minimum weight they could advertise. And 16.6 kg is really, really, really low for a bike that has a massive battery in the middle, honestly. Like I would say this feels like it has the same weight as a normal bike in the same size, which is something that's impressive given how heavy a 375 watt hour battery must be. It's 375 watt hours actually a lot. I don't know. I just know that it weighs a ton when you take it out of the bike. But yeah, basically you have to actually make a few upgrades to this bike if you want to use it in the conditions that most people would use a bike in. Uh, so for instance, if you want to add front and rear uh, mud guards, those cost extra. Once you add a rear light to the bike, by default it doesn't have one. It just has a reflector. Obviously that's going to be an extra 62 pounds. A lot of people People love the idea of having pannier racks, I think it's called, on a bike, and those are gonna cost you extra. And uh, yeah, even uh, to me, the biggest improvement that I would like to buy is a extra battery. And although they don't sell a battery for this bike yet, the battery they sold for last year's model was 800 pounds for a brand new one. And so uh, by the time you make all of the uh, you know purchases that you need to get this to where you want it, it will cost you a lot more, which is the kind of price you pay for getting a product that is perfect for you, some would argue. But I would argue that it's just a tax you pay if you want features that you would probably expect to be included at this price tag. But to be a bit more positive, because I did mention the rear light thing is kind of a weird miss, like I would love for, you know, people behind me to see me more visibly, um, maybe at night. Uh, it does have to be worth saying that light on the front is super, super cool even during the daytime. But if you look at riding it at night, there's something super sleek and futuristic that I just, I just like. I mean, looking at this clip right here, it does look a bit different on a camera than to real life, but it was a very fun feeling. And let's be honest, to some extent, what we're all buying with tech purchases is this feeling like we live in the future, and uh, riding this thing at night does make me feel like I'm there. By the way, speaking of being like the future and being a tech purchase, there's another parallel to the phone world, I guess, and it's the fact that it comes in three models. Each of those models comes in three colors. The only ones that are consistent are black and white, I think. Um, if you want a red or a gray or a blue, you have to get a specific model. Um, it's, it reminds me, honestly, to some extent of iPhones. As someone who would not buy an iPhone, I think this is what you might describe as the iPhone of bikes. Speaking of which, by the way, the last feature that I have to bring up right here is an integrated USB port. This is the world's biggest battery bank. Uh, that's probably not correct. I guess the world's biggest battery bank is every you know, if you if you plug your phone into the wall, you're using the national grid, which is kind of a big battery bank. But this is a very, very big battery bank that can power um, the, the watt hour of the battery is on screen right now. I don't know what that means in comparison to a regular battery bank because they're me measured slightly differently, but you can have an infinite amount of charge on this um, as long as you're not riding. Again, for legal, there's a lot of things. This bike would be the perfect bike if it weren't for the cost and for the legal asterisks and everything. Again, calling it a daytime running light doesn't bother me because like, I, again, what what does that even mean? I, I'm not gonna sue the manufacturer if I get in a problem. I'm gonna be dead, it's not gonna be my problem. Um, you know, uh, the, the whole like phone be, not being able to be plugged in while you're riding, it's not that big of a deal to me because I don't need to charge my phone while riding places, usually. Um, I don't think so at least. Um, but like the, the fact is that this bike is hard locked the moment you get out of the box, you have to decide, are we going for North America Type 1, North America Type 2? I think they have different requirements depending on your local uh, restriction in the United States of America. Or am I going for Europe? And then you are locked into that speed limit forever. And so when you tell the bike you're in the European Union, you can never tell it that you've left. You can never tell it that you're on private lands now or uh, and anything like that. And so the throttle only works up to a certain speed. It only works while you're pedaling, admittedly pedaling 
can be a whole thing. And uh, so yeah, this bike is one that is really great. I love it in so many ways. Um, but the Lego Asterix is the thing I, 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 I hate the most about it, but also that makes me like it the most. <laughs> the reason I wanted this bike, as I've mentioned before, is I want a way to get around cities that doesn't end up with a, a dispute about with the police about uh, the Horse and Carriage Act of 1869. I, I've, I've had these disputes and you know, how, you know how they go when you argue with police about how laws work? It goes, oh, I'm the man of the, in the UK, the, a, a police baton, a, a billy club. And so uh, here you go, have a ticket. If you want to dispute it, see me in court or whatever. And that's not fun. I don't, I don't find that to be a fun process. I, I, I even think the 20 minute conversation about how e-scooters are so dangerous is, is uh, you know, the most um, patronizing thing in the world. I didn't want to deal with that. This is the bike that allows me to avoid that. It looks like a rental bike, it <laughs> uh, but it doesn't perform like a rental bike. It performs like a very fun scooter. And I, uh, you know, like uh, ultimately it's a purchase where I'm like, yeah, didn't want to have to make it, but I've made it now. I'm sticking with it and I'm seeing how it's going to be. Uh, and I will be critical of it if I need to be, you know, is Go Cycle a terrible brand that you shouldn't trust? It could be that way. So far, I've loved the engineering besides the kickstand. The kickstand, it's, uh, it's given me a couple of issues here and there, um, but everything else about it has been excellent. However, if you're the sort of person who thinks that if you spend a large amount, you should be done, as opposed to then adding on the bits that you want, um, this is not a good bike. In fact, honestly, if you want price efficiency, spend two grand, spend like one to two K on an e-bike and you'll get one that will feel super high quality. It'll look like a normal bike. It might have some exposed cables or it might have some, uh, you know, like a, a slightly shorter battery range, but do you need to go 50 miles? Probably not. That is, that is my sales pitch here. This is a cool bike. If you want the long range and the cool design, again, air quotes, cool. And you also want the, uh, very legal looking design because maybe you've had issues with that. And so I don't think I can in good conscience recommend this as a every person's bike, but it's never been at going for the every person bike. It's been going for the niche market, the weird foldable end of the weird fold, uh, of the weird e-bike e market. There are only a few bikes that it competes with. All of them are in a similar price point bracket. Compared to all of those, it is clearly the best. Is a folding e-bike best for you? Only you know that. And the answer is statistically probably not. But I do recommend giving it a whirl. And if you want to see how the Go Bike actually is in the real world, that's what this channel is for. Because I'm not sponsored or paid or anything else like that. I bought this with money. Uh, I'd say cash, but... Oh, you can see planes from there. It's pretty. You know, it's a good day when you're in a park with your e-bike, looking at planes. But you know what else is a good thing? The end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm gonna ride my e-bike home. Have a good day. Bye.